Hi folks, my name is John Kurikawa, and today we're going to be busting five myths about clarinet embouchure. Now this information is only useful to you if you're using a mouthpiece that isn't too radical, very medium in all regards, and you're using a good, responsive reed. Myth number one. The thrust of the corners of your mouth should be pressed inwards towards the mouthpiece. This is not a good idea. It separates the lower lip from your bottom teeth, and you need your lower lip against your bottom teeth. It needs that support, okay? There's a reason why we don't do barbell curls with our lower lip. So, when you're making a clarinet embouchure, you want to gently pull your corners back so you make a little bit of a smile with your lower lip and a bit of a frown with your upper lip. Okay, this places your lips in the ideal position to create a nice, fast airstream. So, okay, by the way, this gentle smile also helps to flatten the chin muscles a little bit, which I'm sure you've all heard your teachers talk about quite a bit. Myth number two, you should push your lower jaw out to meet the reed. This is also a really bad idea. You're basically putting your jaw out of its natural position. And when you push your lower jaw out, if you put your hand on your throat, you can literally feel your throat muscles start to tighten up. This is not a good thing. If you're doing this gentle smile with a lower lip, with a lip supported by the teeth, then this should support the natural overbite, which most people have. Myth number three, your upper teeth should contact the mouthpiece up here while your lower lip contacts down here. I've seen this one around for a long time now, and the problem is this only works if you shove your lower jaw out like a filing cabinet. If we take a look at the embouchure of the great Harold Wright, formerly principal clarinetist of the Boston Symphony Orchestra, you can definitely see here that his corners are pulled back slightly, and he definitely has a natural overbite. He's not shoving his lower jaw out in any way. Also, if we take a look at Robert Marcellus, formerly principal clarinet of the Cleveland Orchestra, although he has a very large overbite, he clearly is not shoving his lower jaw out, and his corners are firm slightly backwards. Myth number four, if you slip a piece of paper between your reed and mouthpiece, that is where your lower lip should contact the reed. Approaching the mouthpiece this way sounds like a good idea. This one's been around for a while also. And while it sounds great, it almost always ends up with too much reed in the mouth to control. Let's take a look at Robert Marcellus again. Okay, although he has a very large overbite, there's not a lot of reed in his mouth, and nobody would say that Marcellus ever had a small sound. This. Not like this, but like this. If you're keeping your lower jaw in its natural position, you won't need to take a lot of reed into the mouth, and the clarinet will be much easier to control as a result. The great clarinet pedagogue, Joe Allard, used to have a test to determine how much mouthpiece you should take in your mouth. Basically, it's this. Put the clarinet in your mouth, like way, way, way too much, and then overblow a G to a D. I mean, none of you guys have ever squeaked on an, on an open G, right? <laughs> okay? And then, once you've achieved that, start to pull the mouthpiece out slowly. At some point, it'll crack down to an open G. And that is the amount of mouthpiece that you should take in your mouth. Myth number five, blow warm air to achieve a warm and dark sound. This sounds like a good idea and it sounds like it would make sense, but I believe that the clarinet is a high air speed instrument. And if you're blowing warm air, you just can't get your air moving that fast. And it also causes the sound to spread. And who really wants that? I like to use the analogy of an angry kitty hissing with a syllable he, like this. When you do this, you'll feel that the tongue rises in the mouth a little bit, particularly in the back. You might feel the sides of your tongue bumping up against your molars just a little bit, and the tip of the tongue coming closer to the tip of the reed. This not only helps you articulate a little bit more easily, but the tongue in this case acts as a scoop or a guide for the air to move into the clarinet as quickly as possible. 
And that's it. I hope you found this talking head format worthwhile. And let me know if you'd like this or the shorter content with the captions or maybe a mixture of both. Keep plugging away at it and happy practicing. Thank <laughs> you.